Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is incredible. You know, have you heard of a honey-do list? You know, honey, do this, honey, do that, that type of thing. Well, you know, Lori keeps me busy, but to be honest with you, I'm pretty good with that. But I do have over here at the Reptarium at BHB and uh, even downstairs in the podcast, I have a, what I would call a, a duty-do list, which just means I've got to do this list, man. I've got a lot to do. And uh, I'm going to go through today and show you some of the things that are on that list and uh, that are going to keep me busy for the next month or so. And we can see some water on the ground here. So this shouldn't come as any surprise to you, but we're gonna fix this up. As a matter of fact, here tonight, I'm gonna shut this waterfall off. I'm gonna drain the water, put salt and pepper in a holding enclosure. Uh, and then Lori's actually gonna come in and try to seal this up tomorrow because I'll be honest with you, I just don't know what to do anymore. I've tried everything in my power, I know it. And I'm a lot of the things I'm gonna talk to you about, you guys know that I've been working on, but we're actually you know, trying to check them off the list. So definitely salt and pepper. I think tomorrow is when Lori said she's gonna just climb in here and once it's drained and actually dried out She's gonna just seal every little spot that she thinks possibly could be leaking and uh, that's basically all we can do Right. I mean we can't really do anything more than that. So uh, hopefully this one will get fixed here this week That would be a huge one off my plate and another pretty obvious one is of course the tortoise door it says please do not shit here I'm not sturdy. Well to be honest with you the entire thing is pretty much uh, not sturdy and kind of crap to be honest with you You guys know how disappointing and I was with this so I think this is going to be pretty high on my priority list because I just don't like the way it looks I don't like the way it acts I don't like anything about it so I have a feeling I'm just going to tear this entire wall out redo the entire thing hopefully it'll be better than ever to be honest with you because you know again there were some things about it I didn't like right from the beginning to be totally honest with you so now that I've done this I'm going to go ahead get this ripped out of here and uh, do that I figure that's going to be it's going to be a solid day guys because just ripping it out is going to probably take an hour or so and then rebuilding it the way I want to this is probably an eight or 10 hour job but the ironic thing is is I probably spent eight or ten hours just on this door so I should have ripped it out to begin with I would have probably been further ahead to build it from scratch sometimes things just work out that way but this is something that is a definite high priority to me because every time I look at it I get upset we certainly had a banger of a year when it came to scaleless corn snakes and some of these now that they're getting a little bit of size on them are absolutely ridiculous this is actually a okatee an abbott's okatee scaleless so it's as close to kind of a normal corn snake scaleless as you can get just with that abbott's influence that gives it a little bit more black and a little bit more contrast absolutely wonderful the tiger scaleless are something kind of a new gene that kind of has that almost tiger appearance and we're still trying to figure out exactly what the genetics are on it we don't know if it's like a recessive we don't know if it's a incomplete dominant type of thing or if it's polygenic we're not 100 percent sure but we know that not only has it passed on through the scaleless just like this one here but we've also produced some normals that look tiger as well that look very different so it's kind of an exciting new gene that we're working on over the next few years we'll kind of figure out the genetics you guys know that it's always hard to pick a favorite snake of any kind right but i will say that the anery scale scaleless corn snakes when it comes to scaleless stuff is probably my favorite. I mean, I just, it's just such an interesting kind of pewtery looking color that makes them absolutely incredible. The first Andre scaleless that we ever produced, I was blown away at. And still after all these years, I'm still blown away. I mean, look at how crazy that thing looks. Only about maybe a week, week and a half left of the new merch, of course, Ho Ho Drogo, my beautiful sloth that I love so very much. You can get the ugly sweater, and if you're not into the ugly sweater, you can still get shirts that just have the cool saying without the ugly sweater on it. You can also get coffee mugs, stuff like that. Link is gonna be in the description. Like I said, maybe a week or 10 days left, and this sale is over. Been seeing a lot of courtship from Aries and Ivy the last few days in particular, and Aries is just riding her back, just kind of doing all the things that you see in pre-breed right now and this has been going on for the last couple days so I have a feeling that here within next week there's a very good chance that we may come in one day and they'll be actually locked up and what happens with anacondas is the male does what he's doing now riding that back kind of you know courting her but then ultimately he'll end up twisting his tail like two or three times around and that's how they're actually locked up so fingers crossed guys I think we're on our way we may see some breeding here within the next short while <laughs> okay, I tell you what I look around this part of the basement down here of course where the control room is podcast room and I think Wow, it's actually gotten worse and worse because we have all of the tubs here that we revamp. We have all the lids here. We've got our water. We got all the spare. All this stuff needs to come out of here because we obviously have to paint the walls. We have to put wood flooring all the way throughout, all the way into the podcast room. We've got to bring down couches, make this place look amazing. It's a lot of work. And you guys might be thinking as I'm going through this kind of to-do list, and you might think like, Brian, it's impossible. But the truth is, this is kind of always how my life is, right? My life is always 
days full of projects. I'm just sharing them all with you in one swoop, you know? But uh, the truth is this pressure is always on me all the time. And uh, these are just things that happen. When I get done with this and get done with all these to-do lists, there'll be just as many to-do lists on the other side of it. And that's okay because that's the life that I've chosen and I'm not complaining at all. As a matter of fact, I'm excited. And this is a room that I am really excited about because I think it's gonna be a really cool place to chill out. Again, there'll be TVs up on the wall here where people can watch the podcast, but we can actually come down and uh, watch TV and hang out with, as, a, as a crew, you know? So I think it's gonna be really fun. A lot of work to do here. One of the more work intensive things, minus 3.0 obviously, that we're gonna do, probably is gonna take me a solid week of every night working four or five hours just to finish this place off, but it is gonna be so dope when it's done. And then we have this room right here. This is actually going to be the New Caledonia Gecko Room, right? So we're gonna have uh, Chihuahuas, we're gonna have Gargoyles, Cresteds, Leechy Geckos, and again, it doesn't, it's not a huge room by any stretch, but it's gonna be like a little mini Reptarium. So there's gonna be cages on this wall, this wall, and all the way on this wall, and they're gonna be like Universal Rock backdrops, they're gonna have automatic misters. Uh, this room stays nice and cold. You wanna keep the New Caledonia stuff usually in the low 70s. They'll need like hot spots and stuff like that. So this room's gonna be really cool. I think we're gonna be able to have our entire collection of lychees and all the New Caledonia stuff in here. Jessica's gonna love this place because it's gonna be her little private haven. I don't think anyone else is gonna come in here, but there's a lot of work because again, we've gotta build the racks. We're gonna have to build the cages herself, put all the backdrops in, put all of the electric for the lighting in here, as well as all of the automatic sprayers. So uh, a lot to do. So right now it's a disaster. It doesn't look like anything at all in here, but this is gonna be a fun one. And, and although there's gonna be a lot of work to be done here, the truth is it's gonna be rewarding because I love building stuff like that and then like we've mentioned before we'll do like Bruce and Jessica tours where people could come down and see the new Caledonia room that'll be their kind of little stick where uh, the only way you're gonna see the new Caledonia room is if you do it with Jessica but uh, it's gonna be worth it and it's gonna be cool and hopefully we'll produce a ton of really cool babies I know we've been crushing it with gargoyles cresteds and chihuahuas we started to get eggs but um, next year will be the first year that we breed the lychee geckos which is gonna be cool and it should be done in this room the albino and the creamsicle scale is stuff is really interesting. Obviously a cream skull is just a type of albino. It just has a little bit of an emery rat influence in it so it makes it a little bit more orange where the albino scalists are just a little bit more red but still absolutely ridiculous. Take a look at this albino here but this is actually an albino motley scalus. So this is actually a triple recessive mutation. The albino, the motley, and the scalus are all recessive. So that's pretty hard to get but once you actually get it we can breed this to albino motley scalus and produce all albino motley scalus. Or we can breed it to albino scalus and get all albino scalus that are heifer motley and so on and so on. But wow look at the just dotting down its things back. It's just crazy cool. I think the thing that's amazing about scaleless corn snakes is that even something like a motley scaleless that's only just a single gene motley and a single gene scaleless can make some tremendous amount of polymorphism. Just basically mean there's a lot of variety, right? This one is super cool with this kind of the dotting down his back, kind of a little bit of striping. And then towards the tail, you have normal kind of saddles like a normal snake. Just really cool how scaleless influence pattern and color. I love when Night Fury sheds because he looks so absolutely incredible. What's up, buddy? How you doing, sweetheart? What are you doing? Oh, come on out here. Oh, and look at it, it looks like a full shed. Oh, it's just got a little bit left over right here. Just got a, just a little bit of peel right there. But look at the glisten that animal has in the iridescence. I mean, oh my goodness gracious. So that was close to a perfect shed, which means that we're dialing the humidity in right. A lot of times he blows up the cage with sheds as well. So I'm super happy that he has a really good shed and looking so incredible. I tell you what, this animal is incredibly impressive. Obviously a huge, huge thing is gonna be kind of getting ready for 3.0 expansion, right? I mean, I really hope that that happens in 2021. You guys know that basically these colubrid racks are now empty because all the colubrids are downstairs. I mean, there's a few animals left that are gonna eventually go downstairs and then we're gonna clear the rest of this room out over the next month or two. And then this whole back room will be open, kind of preparing. Of course, we still have the offices up front. There's still a lot to do with the basements. Uh, a lot of planning, you know? I mean, it's not gonna be something that's gonna be easy. And when is that gonna happen? I'll be totally honest with you, I don't know. I mean, I, I wanna make sure I know where the world is going before I pull the trigger on that massive investment and massive amount of work that I'm gonna put myself through. If I were gonna guess right now, I hope that we can get started about March 
April by the latest of this year. I figure it's gonna take a probably a good solid four or five months to build from start to finish. So, uh, I mean, if we're lucky, maybe by the fall we'll be open in 3.0 of next year. But again, I'm waiting to see what happens. If the world starts to get back to normal quicker, we'll probably do it quicker. If it doesn't, we'll probably have to push it off. But the fact is I'm still gonna be planning and have been planning for quite some time of all the contingencies I need to do in order to make it actually happen. So uh, a lot of planning to do, a lot of thinking to do, and a lot of strategizing to do for 3.0. But can you imagine when this room here is just full of reptiles, just like the Reptair, and that the basement has some cool swim tanks and all kinds of different stuff, stingrays, and oh my God, I'm just so excited. And I really hope that this happens, and I hope that things get back to normal to where we can do the expansion, but a lot of work ahead when it comes on that front. And then we're forever kind of changing things around here at the Reptarium, making new enclosures. We're actually gonna probably take Champ and Sweetie that have this huge cage that they really, as a matter of fact, the other day Champ climbed up on this branch, but they never climb, so they've got this huge thing. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull them off and we're gonna actually put them over on the other side and actually bring Perdita over for that. So that'll be pretty cool. So Champ and Sweetie will still be here. They'll just be on the other side in a different enclosure that actually Sweetie used to be in. And then of course the basilisk here, of course we've been saying, look at how beautiful that big male is starting to get. And these guys are just getting big for this enclosure. Originally we were talking about moving Tabasco and Sriracha, but we kind of fallen in love with those guys to be honest with you. So what we're thinking about doing now is to actually go over here with the Emerald Tree Boa Cage. And it's got a nice waterfall. I think this is where we're gonna put the Basilisk now, which I think will be really cool. That's a huge enclosure that's gonna be really nice for them. I think that'll be really good. And then we have just a bunch of other little enclosures that we'll be moving around. Of course we're gonna be getting that Blackthroat Monitor. The big one we you guys know we have the little one now but if we get the bigger one we're gonna have to move that somehow I'm trying to decide one of these enclosures over here to kind of move around so that we can have that bigger black throat over here as well too so there's a, a constant kind of uh, you know rotation of animals not only because we want to continue to increase as animals are getting bigger they need bigger enclosures but also we want people that come maybe uh, once a month or once every couple weeks or whatever the case is to have new things to look at right so we're always kind of switching things around not only for what's better for the animal but also also just to kind of have some variety at the zoo and we're always getting new stuff right so uh, lots of uh, stuff to do when it comes to the, the reptile zoo it never stops I mean it's always going to be going but uh, again like you can see uh, I have a lot on my plate and, uh, and uh, no wonder why I suffer with anxiety with all the stress I'm always under but uh, it's fun we're gonna have a lot of great times and I'll take you guys along on the entire journey let me know in the comments so what what project that I'm I've mentioned here are you the most excited about I mean what do you want to see us do and what do you want to see us complete I'm uh, I'm really excited to see what you guys think. We produced a couple of these last year and oh my goodness, are they amazing. These are actually scaleless Tessera corn snakes. Now the Tessera is actually interestingly enough like an incomplete dominant. So if you breed a Tessera to a normal, you'll get Tessera first generation. But then of course the scaleless is recessive. So you have to actually get Tessera head for scaleless, raise them up and then ultimately produce them. But wow, the results are truly amazing. This is another triple recessive mutation that Andrea, I told you I like so much. And then of course it's mixed with my and then scaleless and wow that thing just looks so crazy I mean again it's amazing how far corn snakes have come in the last 25 years or so but I can honestly tell you that I never thought I'd look at an animal so weird like this when I started breeding corn snakes when I was like 15 years old this thing is a ripper this one is actually a motley a striped corn and a scaleless corn so again all recessive mutations but the thing that's interesting is that motley and striped seem to be allelic to some extent and they produce these kind of weird patterned animals some Sometimes you'll get some motley ones, sometimes you'll get some stripes, and then sometimes you'll get some things that are kind of in between, kind of like this one, and then of course the scaleless stuff. So as you can see guys, tons of cool scaleless stuff, and this is just scratching the surface. I mean, we produced a ton more, and there's so many more projects we're gonna be working on over the next, you know, five, 10 years. Scaleless corn snakes, definitely, I love these things, and I think that they're just truly amazing. So as you can see, we're gonna be busy for a little bit, but uh, it's gonna be a good time, and I hope that you guys will enjoy the journey. If you did enjoy this kind of to-do list, uh, here, by the way, is a playlist of us building the Reptarium. That way you can see how hard we work and it's going to be hard work ahead of us. I hope that you're also subscribed up here to my podcast channel called Checking In. We're doing three a week. It's a lot of fun. On this side, you can subscribe to this channel. Please turn your post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.